Hello everyone, I'm at Video Productions and welcome back to another video. First off, I'd just like to say, wow, things have been pretty crazy lately. I feel like almost every few days there's a new piece of AI news that is out. I mean, usually it's about Dolly 2 and image generation. That seems to be what's big in the AI community right now. But man, oh man, has it ever been uh, moving quickly. I'd also like to thank everyone for the continued support on these videos. Anyways, I'd like to open up these videos with an interesting AI generation of some form. And today, that's in the form of a man with a jukebox for a head. I actually generated this, and this one came out so well, I'm like, I gotta share this. I know this isn't a jukebox, that's a boombox, but Dolly 2 didn't really seem to care. We got a bunch of variants. This is actually more like a real jukebox. I like the fact that he's wearing some headphones. you think that he wouldn't have to wear headphones if he had a jukebox for his head but I think that little added touch just makes it a little bit funnier hey maybe Dolly 2 has got a little sense of humor this is another one this seems to be a, a cardboard box so it kind of took the box part a little literally and then it sort of added little jukebox boom box aspects to it we've got another one this is like some just sort of speaker system for a head but I really like the angle and the sepia tone and then this one was just another little cool one but he looks very uh, distressed right now he can't unhear all the music that is coming out of his own head I've also got a pretty good one that's just oddly specific beans with hats on fire and honestly it just did a good job we got the beans we got the hats we got the fire and then here's another one this is sort of like Indiana Jones but beans but anyways in today's video, we're going to be experimenting with what I like to call natural prompts. These are basically prompts that are phrased differently than your normal average Dolly 2 prompt. For example, this one is a studio photograph of a Shih Tzu with a petunia on his head. That's a, you know, a normal Dolly 2 prompt. Now, this right here is an example of what I like to call a natural prompt. The prompt was, oh my god, check out this photo. I've never seen a store that sells products like this before. What even are these objects for sale? And you can see how we use natural language to sort of force Dolly into coming up with something really interesting and creative. And honestly, every AI model I've tested does this quite well. We've got some more variations of this, but look how varied these results are. Like, obviously, they're always in a store, but this is a completely different type of product from this. We also got these jars of random stuff, like who knows what that stuff is. But you get a very interesting variety and creative aspect to these prompts, and that's why I like to explore them. And then here's another one, like what, what even are those products? To me it's just so interesting how Dolly can sort of be forced to get creative like this. I've seen other people on Reddit try this out as well with uh, great success and results. So that's going to be our main portion of the video. But real quick, before we get into that, I'd like to talk about yesterday's video because there has been a ton of discussion that I would like to bring to light. If you don't know what yesterday's video was, I basically just talked about the survey that OpenAI put out on Dolly 2 pricing to Dolly 2 users to sort of see what people are using Dolly for and what they're willing to pay. But people were mostly upset that Dolly seems to want to move in the direction of a per prompt uh, payment method. As you can see in the OpenAI subreddit, people are upset. Cool open sourced AI that can create near perfect renderings from a simple text prompt and paper picture people really don't like that here on the dolly 2 subreddit we can even see people creating their own ideas for uh their preferred subscription plans again we really don't know what it costs to run dolly but we know that it isn't free so this person suggests that we should have a uh, freemium 10 free prompts per day. I don't think that OpenAI would ever do that. I do think there's going to be some form of a free trial for a new account though. I don't know, a few hundred prompts and then uh, you have to pay after that. And then they have this hobbyist tier for $15 a month. And I think if OpenAI ever did decide to go with a subscription form, it would look, you know, maybe a little similar to this. I, I think it would be a little bit more expensive though for 1500 prompts. And then they have professional, which they say is 4,000 prompts per month, which is quite a lot. It would be very difficult to get through 4,000 prompts in a month. Considering on average, there are 720 hours in a month, and that includes, you know, when you're sleeping, you'd have to make around six prompts per hour hour to use up that limit and again that includes when you're sleeping so you can basically double that 12 prompts per hour and then they have this artisan one which is a monthly limit of 10,000 prompts which I think is even crazier I don't I don't know of anyone that could really get through 10,000 prompts in a month again considering there's around 720 hours in a month every hour including when you're sleeping 
that would be 14 prompts per hour. And if we multiply that by two, which might account for the, you know, time spent sleeping, and this is still 12 hours per day doing prompts, that would be 30 prompts per hour every single day. You'd have to have a lot of free time. And then they have the uh, commercial licenses, which I think are a great idea for uh, Dolly 2. I would probably buy a commercial license if I was able to use it to make money. And then they also suggest this one-time purchase of something called Dolly Midnight, where you'd be able to generate adult content. I don't think OpenAI will ever allow the generation of adult content. There will be some, there will probably be some sort of open source AI that will allow for this in the future. So everyone who's excited for that, I'm sure eventually it will happen. And I don't mean to knock this guy on Reddit for, you know, creating his own pricing. And I think a subscription based service would be quite reasonable. And it really is what everyone is used to nowadays. And I think that the main reason OpenAI currently wants to go with a per prompt payment method is because that's sort of what they do for their already in use for public GPT-3 text AI featured in one of my videos a few days ago where we use the text AI to generate prompts to then go and generate in Dolly 2. And that was a very interesting video. So in spite of all of this sort of controversy about the pricing of Dolly 2, I decided to run my own poll. So I posted this about 13 hours ago, got about 500 votes here. I said, what should the pricing be? So the options that I suggested here were per prompt, but cheap, a low price subscription based limited generation per month model or a higher price subscription based pricing model with unlimited prompts. So maybe we're thinking like $30 a month unlimited prompts per month. I also threw in the option of this service should be completely free because I saw quite a lot of comments saying that it just shouldn't cost anything. And then I also put free limited use with paid high quality use, which I also saw a lot of comments about. Now, obviously most people seem to prefer that the service should just be completely free. Maybe some people don't realize how much it actually costs to run technology like this. OpenAI has to pay for the use of servers that have racks of very expensive uh, processors that uh, just churn out this stuff all day long and it also costs electricity and you know the space to house it. So you know it costs money to run this stuff. The next one that one was free limited use with paid high quality use. A lot of I saw a lot of people saying that it should be something you know similar to Dolly Mini or Crayon where you get like really low res thumbnails and then you have to pay for a high quality upscale. I could see that method really working out. I feel like OpenAI has this uh, quality about them where they like to have everything really neatly organized and high quality. And the free limited use with pay high quality use is something that uh, is more reminiscent of like a website run by just a few people. And I don't think they would ever go with something like that. Number three, we got per prompt, but cheap. This is what we're hoping currently that OpenAI is gonna go for because currently they aren't really considering subscription based models. Then we have the low price subscription based one and then the higher price priced unlimited prompts one. I thought that uh, this was going to be the most popular one, but it actually was the least popular one. You know, I thought unlimited prompts was really what people wanted, but it turns out that's not true. Anyways, getting into the real content of today's video, natural prompts. So I have some interesting ideas for this one. Check out the photo I have attached in this email. Found this device in my grandfather's attic. What could it be used for? So you can see how open-ended this prompt really is. We know it's gonna be some sort of mechanical device and it was found in a grandfather's attic, so it's probably gonna be old, but it's gotta be some sort of a mysterious thing because we don't know what it's going to be used for. And let's generate. And here we go. Honestly, these are some pretty shockingly high quality photos. They definitely all look like older tools. I like the inclusion of the wood handle actually in both of these, I think, which was, you know, popular back in those older days. This one is rusty. This is an inclusion to sort of make it feel old. And I think this uh, follows the prompt quite well as well. And then this one's got another rusty photo, completely metal, and it's got a handle. But yeah, it really sort of nailed uh, this and especially this one. Like, what is this part for? Very interesting stuff and then this one as well like what what could that even be but these photos you know I think they could actually pass as real photos you could put this on reddit and be like what is this thing I found and people would be like I don't know 
know. And they'd try to figure it out, but they would never figure out what it is because none of these objects exist. Honestly, difficult to pick favorites with this one. I like this one because like the curved piece of metal. This one's really interesting. The next one, I'm going to do an open-ended sort of pet prompt. Look at my fuzzy little guy. I can't believe I was able to rescue him. He is so cute. And then I put some hashtags in there for good measure. Hashtag furry friend and hashtag pet photo. So I'm interested to see if it's going to go with just all pets or if it's going to try to make up a new pet. And wow, okay, it all went with pretty much real pets. Mostly cats, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, this is pretty cute. I actually really like this photo. This is definitely almost passable as a real photo. Just a little messed up with the eyes and the nose. This one, I think, is completely passable as a real photo of a cat. There's no way I would know. That's super interesting. This one's also really, really good. There's a finger curling around him, though, that just shouldn't be there, which is a little creepy. His face looks pretty good, though, and this one's, this one's pretty good. So, guys, I am not too sure what this is. I don't know. It's some sort of little rodent thing. It's pretty cute. It could be a mix of different animals. Animals, but yeah, that's a furry little pet friend. The hands are a little messed up, but otherwise I think this one came out really quite well. Definitely looks like an Instagram photo. They've got another cat. This one's almost flawless. Eyes are a little bit weird, but very good. And then finally, we've got this picture of a chihuahua. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this is a near perfect photo of a chihuahua. That's exactly what they look like. Little demons. I'm just messing around with you guys, uh, but yeah, this one obviously got a little screwed up. And I'm not sure what's going on in the background here, but I mean, it's sort of got the prompt. Not as good as the other photos though. All right, so I'm not sure how this prompt's gonna go, but I said, I can't believe I escaped Area 51 with this. Look at it. It must be priceless. The world needs to see this. And then I did hashtag life-changing and hashtag Area 51. So obviously, you know, it's gonna be some object from Air Area 51. Maybe it's an alien. Maybe it's technology. Who knows what it could be? Again, very open-ended. We'll see what the AI goes with. Not as convincing as the other ones in terms of, like, it actually being from Area 51, maybe. This one clearly didn't know whether to go with a moon rock or an alien so it just went with both and now it looks like a painted rock so no one's gonna believe this is from area 51 this one sort of looks like a toy but i guess it's kind of believable now this one i, I guess it could be from area 51 again it sort of looks like a toy but you can sort of see like alien-esque type deal Maybe if I was a little specific, said maybe just technology or something, we'd get something a little bit better. Yeah, I don't really know what's up with this. I have no idea what this is or why it's here. And I don't know what is in the background of this stuff. Like, I don't know. This one's clearly an alien, but I mean... It looks like a toy. Let's be real. And this one's probably my favorite. Looks like random little moon rock type things. And it's got some like government looking lettering on it. But it looks like it could be from Area 51. I said, guys, look at this photo. I just intercepted an alien communication and gained contact with the aliens. This is the first photo they sent me. Shocking. I'm very interested to see what we'll get. This is the first time I've seen one of these type of prompts actually sort of start to fail. Clearly, there's not really enough training data to understand what I uh, put in. So it's sort of trying to pick up like maybe someone intercepting an alien communication where we've got the tower here and the clouds, you know, maybe this is how he's intercepting it or this one maybe sort of started to understand that this could look like an alien world, possibly. Again, this is just a nighttime photo of, like, the outside or something. I guess this could be an alien planet, but not really. It's just a random photo of, like, a tower at night. I'm not sure. I guess this one also could be an alien-esque world, but, again, I, I just think this prompt uh, was, it was a little too far for the AI to sort of understand what I was looking for. All right, so this next prompt is, I was hiking in the woods and I stumbled upon this a secret entrance of some sort? What could be in there and who made it? So obviously hiking in the woods, come across a secret sort of entrance to something. We'll see what we get. I think the this one might turn out quite well. Ooh, this one, this one came out really good. We can see it's a sort of secret entrance from hiking in the woods. I think all of these have turned out really, really well. I would not want to go in there though. That's kind of scary. Especially that one. That's like so ominous and obvious. Just pointed out. This one's got a gate on it. This one looks like. Yeah, that's creepy. And then there is another one. And this one's got even a little shed, like someone lived in there. Very nice variety, I think, of secret entrances. Very, very well done. I think the AI nailed this one. The next one is, uh, I opened up my Amazon package and this was inside. What is this? Secret government experiments? Can anyone tell me what all of these objects are? Again, this one specifies multiple objects and secret government experiments. 
All right, we definitely got multiple objects and some Amazon packages. Whoa, this one's super crazy. It's got like all these little test things. Like, yeah, this is like, I'd be like, what is this? Some like science experiments in my mail. This one as well. This is like random technology that I never would have thought of. This prompt actually turned out shockingly well. But yeah, I can't make out any of these objects, but they all look uh, like various technology pieces. This one as well. Um, this one's maybe a little bit less government experimenty, but still pretty cool. Same thing for this one. This just looks like some random weird product. And maybe this one as well. It's got like branding on the package and stuff. That's not really secret government tech. And this one, I can't really make anything out, but there's multiple boxes and I like that it included the boxes. So this one's pretty cool as well. I really like this. Looks like some sort of equipment to make something. All right, folks, we're going to end with this prompt. Can someone explain this? My plant started growing this thing. I have no idea what it is, but it's huge and making alien noises help. Again, a lot of directions the AI could go with this one. We'll see how this is for a final prompt. Ooh, this one turned out all right. Definitely see the plant. Definitely looks like a photo. I like that it's always near a window. That's a really nice touch. But yeah, this is like a something I wouldn't expect my plant to grow. This one, not so much. Just sort of looks like a picture of a leaf. Pretty uh, photorealistic. This is disgusting, but good job, AI. I think you actually nailed it. That's, that's alien and disgusting and gross. Uh, this one as well, it just looks like some sort of thing growing off the plant. That's exactly sort of what I asked for, but it looks pretty alien. This one, again, it's just a picture of like a dying plant. And this one's pretty good. It's got some weird stuff going on with the plant, so who knows what that could be. All in all, I think these prompts turned out quite well. And uh, I think uh, in today's video, we had some really interesting and, you know, unique uh, generations. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And check out some of my other videos. Lots of interesting content coming out lately. Goodbye.